in breaking news, a second school in Melbourne has closed its doors after a staff member has reportedly tested positive to coronavirus. Orthodox Jewish school Beth Rivka, Ladies College in St Kilda East and its brother school, Yeshiva College, have now closed for the day. New South Wales is now responsible for more than half of Australia's coronavirus cases. Meanwhile, after the number of infections rose to 61 in the state, the outbreak has caused two Sydney schools to be temporarily closed as the state government attempts to contain the spread. Well, joining me now is New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard. Uh, Minister, good morning to you. So uh, the Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews said yesterday that there may well be an instance where all schools are closed across Victoria. Are you expecting the same here? Look, I think uh, at this stage in New South Wales, we'd certainly be saying let's just take each day as it comes. Um, we had uh, six uh, new cases reported uh, to last night and uh, uh, that seems to be a pretty steady flow at the moment. Four of those came in from um, overseas, two from the USA, one from Switzerland, one from Italy uh, and the other two had uh, uh, connections with uh, previous cases. So it's pretty steady at the moment and I think as long as people remain calm and uh, keep doing what they should be doing, which is uh, looking after themselves, washing their hands, uh, uh, and just being generally careful, um, we're doing okay at the moment. Well, there have been instances where children have been getting the virus from their parents. So does that prove mm. that self-isolating is a flawed concept? No, I think uh, self-isolation um, is a good concept because quite simply, uh, uh, if you're not particularly unwell, having you at home is a far more sensible outcome than having you in a hospital. I mean. The truth of the matter is we all know even in a normal circumstance being in a hospital can actually have a deleterious effect. So self-isolating is good but I think uh, we need to make sure that people understand what is meant by self-isolation and I asked Health yesterday to make sure that everybody who was going into self-isolation was given details on that and uh, late last night I saw one of the documents they're now giving people so I think uh, as long as people are doing uh, what they should be doing, uh, then it's still a sensible way to proceed. But what does that mean? Well, so you, you mentioned there you, you were seeking clarification on, on, on self-isolation, but what does that mean? So should mm. people be kept in separate rooms inside their homes? If, if possible. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the individual circumstances in people's homes. But I think, uh, I think we all know what self-isolation basically means. That is try and keep away as best as possible from the rest of the family, but still, still enjoy being at home. Um, if you have separate bedrooms, we'll make sure there are separate bedrooms. If you can use a separate bathroom, then use a separate bathroom. If not, then uh, obviously you have to be particularly careful about using uh, the appropriate hand washing, disinfectant and so on. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a sensible way to approach it. And I think uh, um, you have to understand too, Peter, as we move forward, if we do get uh, a big increase in numbers, then we certainly won't be wanting people to be in hospital if they're basically well and 80%. 80% of people on international figures um, will actually be reasonably well. It'll be, uh, it'll be basically the, uh, the symptoms that you might have every year with a, a common cold, uh, mild, very mild flu. So it's not uh, by any means uh, um, something that we should all be really, really worried about in that sense. Well, OK, on that point, so you would have seen the, the long queues of people, uh, potential victims who are waiting for treatment outside hospitals in mm. Melbourne and Sydney as well. Some of them are mm. being told to go home. Now, Brendan Murphy mm. said uh, yesterday that we are not recommending people with acute cold flu-like symptoms be tested unless they've been overseas. But aren't those mm. systems precisely the symptoms of coronavirus? Look, basically the symptoms of uh, coronavirus are very similar uh, to uh, flu-like symptoms, so fever, sore throat... Uh, yeah, so those nose. people are being told to go home and they might well have coronavirus. I think, I, think, uh, I think the issue here is if you've got very mild symptoms, then it's probably better that you don't clog up the system. Obviously there's always a limited number of both beds in hospitals, but also pathology capacity. Um, and uh, Trying to manage that is a sensible way to go and I think uh, the Chief Health Officer from Australia, that is the Federal Health Officer, is making the point that uh, this is not a time for rushing in for testing if you're not feeling uh, a little unwell. Look, I've had, as Health Minister, I'm not a doctor, but I've had calls from, uh, from colleagues, from friends and others saying, should I rush in and have a test? Mm. The answer is no, don't. Um, if you think you're really uh, unwell and, and I qualify this by saying this, Peter, and you have had contact with a known coronavirus uh, carrier, 
um, or you've come in as a traveler from overseas uh, again from some of the hotspots yeah then it's more more sensible for you to go in and make sure that you do it and if you are going to go into an ED um, then make sure that you ring ahead having said that um, the federal government has announced uh, additional funding for uh, what are being varyingly called either fever clinics or, clinics or respiratory clinics or coronavirus clinics um, hopefully we'll as things progress get a, a more mm. settled name for them across Australia and what that is doing is actually making sure that uh, uh, people who do have uh, some respiratory uh, illness can come in and avoid come into our hospitals across Australia and avoid the emergency department which makes very very good sense well you just mentioned that pop-up clinics video conferencing to be bulk build what extra yeah. is the New South Wales government doing well, we obviously are working with the federal government, as all state and territory governments are. We're having regular discussions, in fact, daily discussions um, at a senior officer's level and regular discussions at a ministerial level. And uh, the suggestion about uh, the GPs has been one that uh, we've all been uh, driving for a little while now, and we're delighted the federal government has now um, agreed to that particular path. That, what that effectively means is that GPs who... Um, are principally the responsibility of the federal government are, uh, are perhaps able now to have a discussion with a patient over the phone and know they'll get paid for it uh, and that's a big plus because it'll mean that people who are feeling a little uh, a little un a little uneasy because they have a perhaps what might be just a normal cold for this time of the season um, can actually ring into their doctor and know that their doctor is quite happy to take that call and get paid it also has the advantage of keeping those people out of the system in the sense of not bringing their whatever they are, even if it's a cold uh, or minor flu, it just keeps them out of uh, bringing them into contact with other people. So that's a really big plus and the state governments and territory governments around the country are delighted about that and we thank the federal government for that. But we're also very pleased that uh, they've uh, stepped up and offered to pay on a 50-50 basis some of the additional work that uh, state governments are doing. Uh, we've already, I, I saw some reports this morning that we are about to get uh, these respiratory clinics uh, in, in hospitals, these separate pathways. A number of our hospitals have already established those because uh, more than a week ago New South Wales Health was talking to, uh, to all of these uh, hospitals and local health districts. We have 15 local health districts in New South Wales and uh, we've had constant contact uh, with those health districts and been saying to them can you look at what steps you can take in your particular local health district to increase capacity but also to divert um, respiratory patients away from our EDs. So things are going pretty well but I, I just remind people that uh, it is an evolving situation you know this is an unprecedented situation and I think uh, thus far we're doing extremely well with the exception of perhaps people lining up buying toilet rolls and being a bit silly on those fronts, everything else is progressing fairly well. Yep, well there is that. Uh, New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard, we're bang out of time but appreciate uh, your time this morning. It's a pleasure Peter.